Hey, it's Mike here, and today an urgent response video to the recent media blitz led by the BBC to make everybody believe that vegan and vegetarians have higher risk of strokes. It was based off a BMJ article that was very recently published. The message is clear eat plants and be very afraid because your brain is gonna pop. We're gonna of course crack open the study at the root of this. We're gonna look at what it actually says and what the implications are and compare it to another very recent study that just objectively used better methodologies and studied a very similar thing. We're also gonna look at the words of an expert who makes a very compelling case that no, in fact, vegetarians and vegans do not have higher stroke risks. And finally, we are going to look at how no, even if they did have higher stroke risks, they're not worse off in terms of overall health. All right, let's go. I have to mention right after I went to bed late last night after releasing a video on a British Medical Journal article, you know, scaring people about vegan brain health. Of course, I open it up to another British Medical Journal article that's at least being used to scare people about vegan brain health. It never ends. And the first on the scene appears to be that BBC article, which was then, of course, echoed by other articles, essentially copy and pasted in the same format. I mean, look at this. The Independent article, Bloomberg as well, same narrative, definitely deserving of a Pulitzer Prize. We're gonna start by unpacking the BBC article because that's what most people saw first. And honestly, even just the headline is what most people are gonna see and carry to the grave and think for eternity. Now, every time they see a vegetarian or vegan in the future, regardless of how healthy they actually are, they're gonna be like, oh, you'll probably die of a stroke anyway. I'm just gonna eat my meat. But let's go deeper than the title, all the way to the subheading, which says the veg group actually has lower levels of heart disease, something that, you know, wasn't put in the title. I wonder why. Wonder why. Gotta get those clicks. To be fair, the article also said, quote, however, it cannot prove whether the effect is down to their diet or some other aspect of their lifestyle. We will see when we look at the actual study, but of course they had to finish it off with, and there was a call last month for vegans to be aware of the need to ensure that they were consuming enough of another nutrient called choline important for brain health, linking to a previous article. It's like the BBC sits down at the beginning of every month and they're like, all right, what's the attack plan on vegans for this month? We need to meet the demand for good news about your bad habits. And if you haven't watched my very recent video on choline, Spoiler alert, the nutritionist who wrote it is in bed with virtually every choline special interest there is. All right, moving on. All right, enough of the BBC. Let's look at the actual article. This is a study that looked at 48,000 people. For some, it was up to 18 years of tracking them. And this is an observational study. It's not a clinical trial. It's not a dietary intervention. Therefore, it is not capable of proving cause and effect worth mentioning. The most important finding right off the bat for people who want to drag vegans is that there were no statistically significant vegan specific findings in the study, meaning you can't make any meaningful vegan specific claims from the data. And earlier I referred to it as the veg group because they actually clumped vegans and vegetarians together so that it would be statistically significant. And it's worth mentioning from other Epic Oxford studies, that's the data set that they used, about 85 to 90% of vegetarians are not vegan, only a small portion of them are. And this veg group absolutely did not have a vegan profile. For example, looking at cholesterol levels, the meat eaters were at 212 total. The the vegetarian group, that veg group, was at 193 when vegans averaged down around 150 milligrams per deciliter. The veg group was also, get this, eating only 22 grams of fiber per day when the meat eaters were up at like 18, basically no more fiber. What were they eating? How could they eat that little fiber? I mean, just a cup of beans has like 15 grams of fiber and most vegans are probably up around like 60 to 80. No surprise that the veg group ate more cheese than the meat eaters, but that being said, they were still healthier in many other ways. For example, non-dietary ways such as smoking less, and this is very important for later. Now I wanna get to the expert opinion here, and this is from a cardiologist named Malcolm Finley of the Barts Health Center and Queen Mary University of London. He said, quote, the excellent data they present show that people who follow a vegetarian diet or just not eating meat were significantly healthier than meat eaters. This stretches right across the board. Not only did vegetarians have less heart attacks and strokes, but also less high blood pressure, fewer medications, and fewer were diabetic. Wait, what? Less strokes? What do you mean, Malcolm? Enlighten me. He goes on to say, quote, Unfortunately, the claim that vegetarians have a higher risk of strokes isn't really supported by the data, and on my reading, this is putting too much weight on a complex statistical method to try and correct for the fact that the vegetarians were very much healthier than the meat eaters. This is almost certainly because their conclusions are based on adjusted hazard ratios, where the researcher basically put the question, what if the meat eaters didn't have higher blood pressure and use moderately complicated statistics to adjust the likelihood of stroke and heart attack and so on. And this only works if there is 
isn't an interaction between the baseline characteristics. So this may be another case of possible over adjusting. In other words, that the meat eating group was so unhealthy that the researchers got lost in a statistical jungle. So they take that actual lower stroke risk in vegetarians. They go, oh, well, it's actually gonna be a little higher because of the smoking adjustment. And then it's gonna be higher because of the little BMI adjustment, you know, the cholesterol adjustment. And then we're also gonna do the high blood pressure adjustment. When the researchers were dialing down these stroke numbers, they actually might have gone a little too far. This notion makes sense on a few levels. First of which the general principle is that if a certain population has more heart disease, they also tend to have more stroke. Looking at WHO data here across the world, that is the case. More heart disease and more stroke are very connected but it's the opposite in this study. And that makes sense in terms of the mechanism. Heart attack and stroke are usually from a ruptured lesion in the artery wall. It's just a matter of where it is. Now for what appears to be the final nail in the coffin on this vegan and vegetarian equals stroke notion. Looking to this recent meta-analysis that's you know just a couple months old, but interestingly didn't make headlines. It also included Epic Oxford data as just a fraction of the seven studies that they looked at on about 200,000 people. Again, this is a meta-analysis of observational studies, obviously more powerful than a single observational study. And they found a very similar 22% lower heart disease risk. But interestingly, they found an 8% lower stroke risk, though it wasn't statistically significant, but it was not a higher risk at all. But I wanna move on and play along with the idea that, you know what, maybe these vegetarians actually did have higher stroke risk. Well, the reality is even if they did, they would still be better off, they would still be healthier. Here's why. Heart disease kills way more people in the UK than stroke does. Even the BBC article hinted at this if you were paying attention to the numbers with 10 less cases of heart disease and three more of stroke. So what would the study's implications mean for the UK where the study was done? Well, looking at stroke death, we have 32,000 a year. And looking at heart disease deaths, there's 73,000 a year. That's over twice as many deaths from heart disease. Now let's open a scenario up where all of the UK goes vegetarian and see how it works. Well, that brings us from 73,000 heart disease deaths down to roughly 57,000. Not a perfect number, but good enough for this. And playing along, stroke would rise from 32,000 to 38,000 if everyone went vegetarian. So in the meat eater world, we're looking at approximately 105,000 deaths a year from cardiovascular events. But in the vegetarian model, we're looking at 95,000. That's 10,000 less deaths, which is huge. Heck, the lead researcher even said, quote, it does seem that the lower risk of coronary heart disease does exceed the higher risk of stroke if we look at the absolute numbers. But most of the media did not include that quote from her and they ran with all the fear mongering about going on a plant-based diet. And this study came out somewhat recently in the Journal of the American Heart Association, finding something right in line with all of this, that the more plant-based you eat, the lower your mortality risk is. Now it's important to remember that we're talking about a group of almost all vegetarians here with some vegans. This is not a great representation of vegans. And vegetarians have some limitations that vegans don't in terms of artery health, looking to Dr. Esselstyn's whole food vegan diet trial on 200 people. Now they started out with advanced cardiovascular disease after 12 years, the 177 that's stuck with the diet, virtually had no heart attack and stroke. Now 0.6% rate of these events, but the 22 people that fell off the wagon, went back to eating meat, had a 60% rate over 12 years of heart attack and stroke. And comparing these people to themselves, a lot of them had high rates of heart attack and stroke before going on the diet as well. Boom, went down to basically zero, worth mentioning. So being afraid of going on a vegan diet for cardiovascular outcomes, that's kind of like being afraid of getting frostbite in the Bahamas. Some of you might be wondering, maybe there were some conflicts of interest. And looking down at their financial disclosures, they do mention a grant that includes the trigger word livestock on this topic, but it's possible that it just means this grant is used to study the topic of livestock as well. It seems like they're neutral in the sense that they're perpetuating the status quo of meat consumption. They're not necessarily anti-plant based, but the grant program does say that it will quote, also involve partnering with Sainsbury's to test how changes in demand for animal source food could be achieved. It's a little bit worrisome, but I personally don't think that this aspect influenced the outcomes of the study at all or the researchers, especially given the researcher's statements like, 
how there were less deaths in the vegetarian group. I think it was more of just getting into the statistical mud a little bit too much, and it was really the BBC's fault for going out and pushing those titles out there. In the end, the study had its flaws. It likely over-adjusted for a bunch of things, and it did not line up with more powerful, more methodologically sound studies on the same topic using more data. Those showed that there wasn't an increase in stroke, but all of them across the board showed a decrease in heart disease, which is, again, our leading killer. But it is worth mentioning that none of the findings in the study were statistically significant on vegans in particular. Again, we can't make any claims about vegans from the study, really. So really, in the end, the BBC did a trash, horrible job at reporting, trying to smear plant-based diets once again, probably to get more clicks, a sad state of affairs. And the saddest part of all of this is that they're scaring people away from a vegan diet, which includes a whole food vegan diet, which could be humanity's best hope at actually stopping stroke in its tracks based off of the studies that we have. All right, let me know what you thought about this. I really tried to crank this video out for you guys quickly so that it was relevant still. And special thanks to everybody that sent me the article right away so I could get started on this issue. And also, if you want to be supporting what I'm doing, feel free to check out my Patreon. And sadly, my support's actually gone down a little bit, but it also helps to support me with your finger on the like button. And of course, subscribe, notification bell, all that jazz. All right, thanks for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.